Since we're about to add a draw tiles method, I thought I'd make sure that you understand how the scrolling is actually taking place and thus how it's drawing the tiles. For example, if you were to draw the tiles without the scroll offset and you were to just increment which tiles are shown. So if this is A1 and it's going to A2 and then it's starting at B1 up here and going to B2 down here, it loops through and just draws all these tiles. And then you increment A1 and thus a2 then you end up with everything appearing to have moved to the left because it's drawing a new section of tiles but we want it to scroll smoothly so we use a scroll offset before we switch which section of tiles we draw to do that it updates the offset in the direction we want to move and then when it gets to our destination it switches which section of tiles is being drawn and then it just repeats that so that you get this continuous scrolling effect so let's add our draw tiles method public void draw tiles boolean draw colliders. Under some circumstances we would like to be able to loop through and draw colliders after we've drawn the scene. So normally that would be false. When you're playing the game that would be false. For editing and testing purposes you could set it so that it would draw colliders so you can see where all the collision regions are and what types of collision regions they are during editing. I also put this boolean for edit mode because sometimes you're in edit mode but you don't necessarily want to draw the colliders you just want to see where the monsters are in the map so it kind of gives you a little bit more options that way. We'll need to know which sections of tiles are being drawn. This will also come in handy in other parts of the game where we want to determine what monsters are visible or what collision regions if we're looking at collision regions, which ones are visible. That's why I made them public members of this class. The starting vertical location is going to be location Y minus the tile span. So how much up from the center tile. And we're going to go how much down from the center tile. The same sort of idea. How many tiles to the left of the center tile. Let's change these to tile span just so it's a little shorter. So this gets the region of tiles draw. We also want to prevent any kind of out of bounds problems. In other words, we don't want to use a section of tiles that's partly off the map, so we'll have to clip it to the map. B2 is equal to tiles i minus 1. And again, just to be extra paranoid, if B1 is greater than equal to tiles i, B1 is equal to tiles i. Let's do the same thing for A. Just copy this and paste it. Change out the wide. The next step is to calculate the start coordinates for actually drawing the tiles on the screen. So the B difference is equal to location Y plus B1, which is how many tiles up from the middle of the screen. And the A difference is equal to location.x minus A1, how many tiles left. Part of the reason we do it this way is because these may have just been clipped and they may have been changed. So let's get the actual starting coordinate x, starting coordinate y, screen center minus the difference times 64, so it's in terms of the tile size. Calculate starting x coordinate tiles shown on the screen. Screen center y minus b diff times 64, for the same reason. So now let's begin drawing the section of tiles that should be seen. We're going to need a float x, y, which will be the screen coordinates as we loop through everything. And also need indexes a, b, and sheet index. a and b are the tile indices, the map's horizontal and vertical indices, and i will be the sheet index. This is a shortcut reference to the sheet. Not sure that that's absolutely necessary, but it might shorten things a bit. Overlap count is zero. So we're going to count up the number of overlaps. Eventually we'll also want to count up the number of crystals, but we don't have a way to draw crystals yet, so we'll do that later. Tile position will be the final tile position on the screen. So setting up for the outside loop going down the screen, we'll set the first tile we want to look at and the Y as the Y screen coordinate the tile would appear at. And we'll be, listen, B2 
which is the end tile. Then we'll loop internally in the horizontal direction, starting at A1, screen coordinate start X. And while A is less than the ending A coordinate on the map, we need the sheet index at the map tile. So what's the index? Which type of sheet part are we supposed to draw? And the tile position is going to start as a new vector 2 of the screen coordinate minus the current scroll offset. So like I said, this scrolling offset is used to move these tiles from 64 to 0 if we're going left, and then it switches which tiles it's going to draw and resets the offset to 0. So then it's going to be drawing these tiles, and then we'll scroll them another 64, and then switch which tiles it's going to draw and reset it again. So let's have some editor location helpers, which can be drawn here. If we need to see the colliders, if the tile is solid, or you can stand on it, We'll have two different sizes, one size for a regular solid and another size for platforms. So platforms will be vertically shorter. So set a size for them. This basically means the size won't change for regular ones, but if it's not solid, meaning that it would have to be a platform, then we say sys or size is equal to new vector two. And so we'll make it shorter in the vertical direction to show that it's a platform. When I say platform, I mean passable platform so you can jump up through it from below and we'll draw off of the tiles image at this tile position now I'm going to use this right here as the image to mark which tiles are solid or which ones tiles are platforms. If something was a passable platform, it'll scale it to 0.4 in the vertical direction, so it'll be like that, and then you can see that it's something you can jump through from below when you're looking at the editor. I'll put a black background behind this just so you can see it better. And later, too, we'll use these here as particle effects. So the coordinates of that little piece there, using the info window, I found as 960.0 with a width of 63. Type 63. We'll say color purple. Probably end up being a bit of a dark red because uh, technically there aren't there isn't a blue component in that. So it would actually be better if that square was was actually white. Then you could actually make it purple or any color you want because then you'd have your full R G and B components to work with. Size and we don't have to worry about sprite effects or depth. And we're going to skip everything else. So we'll advance the horizontal index on the map for the tiles, and we'll advance the screen position that we're drawing at by 64. The reason we're doing this is if we actually call this method with draw collider set to true, I would only do that if we've only already drawn the map and we're in editor mode or something like that, and we just need to see the colliders afterwards so they get drawn over top. Everything's been drawn already, so all it's doing is finding out where it needs to show the colliders, and then it just continues continues to the next loop because this is all it really needs to do. And then if I'm not interested in doing that, but I am interested in seeing where the monsters are, I can say if edit mode. I might even want to call this if show monster mode or something. And if the monster starts not equal to monster type none at this tile, then we can show something to indicate where the monster is in the same sort of way at the tile position using that little box to show that there's something there. You could get into showing specific monsters if you wanted, but I don't think it's necessary. This is to show where the monster starts, so when you're editing the map you'll be able to see the monster. This just shows which tile the monster actually starts at. No rotation, origin, zero, regular size, prefix none. Same thing, this is all we're going to be doing for this loop, it's for showing monsters. So let's continue. And this is the part where we draw the actual tiles. If the index is zero, we may as well speed things up a little bit and continue. So empty, so skip to next one. SH shall represent sheet at index i. And we're going to add into the tile position that we've already calculated its offset. And we may want to store overlaps, otherwise just draw. So if it's an overlap, uh, we'll say overlap tiles and overlap count. And we'll add to it at the tile position the sheet's rectangle source for that image. The rotation of that tile, because you will be able to modify its rotation on the editor and as well as its scale, and let's boost the overlap count. Otherwise, let's just draw the tile. 
with the top position with the offset added in on the source rectangle. No tinting or anything. With its rotation at its origin, which will be the corner, because I didn't bother to make it so that it would be the center or something you could adjust. But you can change the offset anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's not the center. Okay. Oh, this shouldn't be tiles. This should be tiles image. That's the texture that we need to draw from. Okay. Let's advance horizontally through the map and move ahead 64 pixels on the screen to the right. And for the outside loop, we'll move down through the map and advance 64 pixels down. Just a quick recap, first we get the region of the tiles that we're going to draw. We'll make sure they're not out of bounds. Then we get the new tile span if they're clipped. Then we get the starting screen coordinates of where the tiles would appear in the upper left hand side, probably off screen. And we loop through all the tiles and we draw them. This stuff here it only does if it's the second time we're calling this method to show colliders or monster locations. But this is where it actually draws the tiles, skipping any that are empty to save some time and it just stores the processed information of the tile position with offset added in the rotation and scale into this overlap tile information which is a processed tile type after it's drawn the scene drawn all the monsters and characters and sprites and everything into it it will need to draw the overlaps on top of those so we'll create another method which can do that called draw overlaps so it's going to loop through any overlaps, if any exist. That's why I start with while i is less than overlap count, rather than go do while, and I draw the overlaps from the tiles image using the overlaps information, using the index of the first one in the list. We're basically drawing it the same way we were before, just using the stored information to draw afterwards. Make sure to increment i. And that's all there is to that. Let's go to the top of our map class and we'll just remove this because I'm just going to use one namespace for the entire project. All right, go into map related stuff, right click on it. We're going to add an editor class called editor. What does our editor need? It'll need a map or it'll need access to the map at the very least. And we'll get a shortcut to the tiles themselves so we don't have to keep saying mp.tiles. Just point to the tiles directly and a reference to the sheet which has all our sheet parts in it. We'll need to be able to do input so we'll access our input class. We'd like to know when we've saved our map so that we can verify that it actually was saved. And let's have a switch for whether or not we're showing colliders while we're editing. We'll start with the constructor taking in a uh, reference to the map and our input and we'll need access to the sheet parts. And we'll just say MP is equal to the map. We'll point directly to the tiles and gain access to our input class, our input object. Get access to the sheet parts. We'll initially set our scroll offset to zero. Let's resolve the vector here. And just to shorten the code a bit, let's make a boolean shift down that is the value of shift down in input. That way when we're doing our conditional tests, we don't have to say in dot shift down each time, we can just say shift down. It depends on your preference. So we'll say if there's a key press or whoa. Okay, so we'll need to resolve keys in here too, because I don't want it doing that. So if the key press is right or the shifts down and key down for right, this way you can hold down the right key with shift down and scroll very quickly through the map. So we move our location on the map to the right and we can move the background. So in other words, if you're tapping to the right, it will increment the map location. And if you hold down shift, you can hold the right key and it'll scroll very quickly to the right. We're missing a bracket here. Let's copy this idea to the next line and change this to left. And we'll be reducing the X value so that we're going to the left instead, which means our background should be plus plus. And remember that's where it samples from. And if the key press is down, or if down and input key down, since this is the editor, we'll just ignore changing the background position vertically for going up and down, because the level isn't that big up and down anyway, and it's just the editor, so it won't matter. Let's fix this. Copy that again. This one will be up, and we're going up, so Y minus minus. Let's make sure the map doesn't go out of bounds. So if map location X, is greater than or equal to the maps files wide, and we'll have to clip it. 
tiles wide minus one, and we'll change the background x plus plus. So we're going back one tile, which means we increment the background position. That's just so that when you hit the edge of the map, the background doesn't keep scrolling, which looks silly. So that's the only reason I added that in there. Again, since it's the editor, it doesn't really matter, but I prefer how it looks that way. And if the map location becomes less than zero, set it to zero. We'll fix the background so that it didn't change. And if the location Y is greater than or equal to the maps tiles high, then we clip it to tiles high minus one. And we don't have to fix the background because we weren't scrolling it when we were adjusting the map's Y location. And if location is less than zero, then we'll say it's equal to zero. So we'll need to do the delete tiles. So if we've got a key press, and it's the delete key, or we'll use the backspace key too, then we'll call it the maps delete tile. And we want to be able to set a type, like different types of colliders. So we'll say if the key down was, say, insert, and we'll have to later add a set of instructions on the screen so you know what buttons do what. We'll just call set type, which if you don't specify what it is, it just sets it to solid. And that's all we want insert to do. So that way you could have a background object that you would want to be able to stand on. You could change it so that certain tiles for it are actually solid and then you can stand on it. Let's add some regular tile input functions so we can add tiles to our map. So if the key press is Q, we'll add the first tile and we're just working our way across the key. Board. Let's copy this, add it here, go to the next key on the keyboard, another index, do the same thing. Next key on the keyboard was E, and that'll be 3. And we can just kind of repeat this. We have 16 different indices, so add some of these. This be 4, 7, 10, and 13. Just adding 3 each time. This would be 5, 8, 11, 14. It'd be 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. But we also have to advance the keys on the keyboard. Last one was R. Then then we go to T, then Y, then U, I, O, P, and then back to the left side and down, A, S, D, F, G, and let's add one more because I think there's 16, H. Ideally what you do is have it so that you can click on a menu item and all your tile images will pop up. Maybe you can pan around them and you can click on them and select which ones you want to add to the scene. But I would also have hotkeys because it can be faster, especially if you're reusing the same part over and over again, or you might be reusing the same three or four parts. Having these sorts of hotkeys set up is a lot faster than continuously selecting between three or four different parts that you're using quite a bit. So we'll also need to get the world position of the tile. It'll be a vector2 world coordinate. We'll use our converter we made before, and we'll get it from tile to world from our map's location. We can add a monster or a character, or like an NPC, directly at this world coordinate. Since we don't have a way to add monsters yet, we'll just leave that there for later. In the meantime, though, if the key press was M, we can set player's start position, as start data.x as the current map location. Let's place player. 